Hi, this is Josh Takel with Living Eco. Check out the DVD of Fuel. This is the movie I directed. My wife, Rebecca Harrell Takel, produced this film. It is an amazing journey about green energy. Look at the cover here. We've got a, a world covered in oil. We did this, you know, a year and a half ago, well before the BP oil spill, because we wanted to show people, look, this is what's really going on. The DVD shows the truth about Louisiana. It shows the truth about oil spills, and, and no other film really gets into the bayou where I'm from and gives you the truth and gives you the solution. So whether you buy the DVD or you get it on Netflix or you get it on Hulu or iTunes, uh, watch it. It'll change your life. Hi, I'm Ken Spector, and I'm here on behalf of LivingEco.com, and I'm here today with Josh Tickell. So the Fuel DVD is out. Can you tell me a little bit about what features are on the DVD that uh, perhaps are, you know, were not in the film? Well, the features on the DVD that are really exciting include how to get 150 miles per gallon from your Prius. So there are a lot of Prius owners out there who are environmentally minded. Uh, the Prius uh, behind me here actually gets 150 miles per gallon. It has a plug and it has an electrical battery pack that's far larger than the one that comes with the Prius. So we go through that in detail on the DVD and show you how you can do that. Wow, that's superb. So uh, the last time I spoke with you, we were at the EMA Awards and you had taken the Algeus across the country. What has changed? I mean, obviously we have this BP disaster. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, we spent quite a bit of time down in the Gulf. I'm only here very briefly. We'll be back in the Gulf uh, within the next couple of days. The reality is it's probably a hundred times worse than what we've seen in the media. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's truly a heartbreaking situation, what's happened ecologically. But what's happened specifically with government and with how it's been handled has been nothing short of negligence and corruption, really criminal behavior. So you said it may take, I saw you in another video, a million years to clean this up plus? We, we have a, a situation that may never truly go out of the ecosystem. When Corexit mixes with the oil, it creates tertiary and, and fourth stage chemicals, uh, some of which are like dioxins. They don't leave the environment, period. Mm, that's unbelievable. And now you're working on another film called Spill. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Spill was really inspired, obviously, by the Gulf Coast oil disaster. And it's about the issues surrounding the oil spill. We've all seen the videos of T you know, awful heartbreaking videos of birds covered in oil, and we've seen the heartbreaking videos of shrimpers out of work. Uh, Spill takes a whole different perspective on this, and that is, you know, what did it really take to get to the point where BP could be the kind of company that would destroy an entire ecosystem and not be culpable or liable for that? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what did it take to get America to the position where we would allow an oil company to do something like this? Mm -hmm. And how can we move forward? How can we really move beyond petroleum, not with oil companies, perhaps without them? The president of a company called Sapphire, is that, what is it, Sapphire Energy? Yes was a former executive at BP, and she left, what, in 2009, and now she's heading up Sapphire. Can you comment a little bit about what Sapphire is doing to change the trajectory of oils and energy? Well, one of the, one of the most breakthrough concepts around energy that we'll explore in a new dimension and spill is the algae industry. It's gone from having just a handful of companies to now over 800 companies in the space. It looks like it could be a trillion dollar a year industry within the next decade. And Sapphire is one of the companies that's leading the way with algae. Uh, their technology is probably three to five years ahead of anything else I've seen. And what they've really mastered is they've mastered growing algae for fuel. And bear in mind, we could use 9% of the Sonoran Desert to grow 100% of the fuel that we need in the U.S. And it would cost us less to develop that infrastructure than the damage that the BP oil spill has caused. The algae organisms, are they being genetically modified and have they looked into what impact that could have on the environment? Well, a lot of the algae organisms are hybrids. So just like we would hybridize grapes to make wine or hybridize the wheat to make better bread, they're hybrids, they're species that have been very carefully uh, not necessarily modified, but they've been genetically paired over and over and over again to produce the right traits to produce oil. Mm -hmm. uh, the modification is definitely something that's foreseeable with algae. 
uh, as it has as it has happened with our food, as it's happened with our medical devices and so on and so forth. Where that will lead and what safety precautions that industry will put in place, I, I can't really say. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, based on the reality that we consume in the U.S. 24 barrels of oil per person, China consumes one barrel of oil per person. Within the next decade, that number in China will increase to 15 to 20 barrels of oil for a billion people. There is physically not enough oil on the planet. We will have a major human catastrophe if we don't start looking, not just at efficiency, but we're going to need liquid fuel, and algae is the only place we can get it. So as far as all of the algae fuel companies that you've been researching or biofuel companies you've been researching, which scenario to you seems the most feasible? I know there's different ways to grow the algae. Uh, there's, there's the, I've seen them in bags where they're out in the ocean, they're in yeah. bags, and I've seen them on covers of ponds and photo bioreactors, right. right. So of all the scenarios you've seen, which one do you think is the most feasible and which one do you think is, is, is the best solution at this point? Yeah, well, it's funny that, that there's garbage trucks behind us making all this noise. Because oh, I can't hear them. I, I didn't even realize. <laughs> Really, the, the best scenario is to utilize the waste streams that we have, which is our runoff water from our sewage treatment plants, and to use our physical garbage streams as nutrient sources for algae. Mm -hmm. The best case scenario is algae is grown in the desert, we use salt water from the ocean, and waste streams, including waste CO2, to feed the algae. Mm -hmm. So we're literally taking resources that aren't being used, are being wasted, or are being underutilized, and turn them into a, a resource for humanity. I read back in February that DARPA, DARPA the, of the, from the Defense Department, mm. had a concept where they were going to be able to reduce the price of fuel to a dollar a gallon. Yeah. And I haven't heard anything since. I tried to get an interview at DARPA and haven't been able to get that yet. So I was wondering if you had heard anything more about that. Well, it, theoretically, it's possible to reduce the cost of a gallon of fuel tremendously using algae. You know, once the basic technology nuts and bolts are kind of figured out, we're looking at something that can essentially be grown in any desert environment in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, bear in mind, deserts occupy a tremendous portion of our continents. Australia, huge desert in the middle of that country. It's mm -hmm. the size of, you know, Australia is the size of the continental U.S. with a desert that's the size of the Louisiana Purchase. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, the entire Middle Eastern uh, frontier has been untapped in terms of a resource for actually growing agriculture. The amazing thing about algae in the desert is it seeds clouds. Mm -hmm. So it starts to regenerate an ecosystem that may have once existed in that area. Mm -hmm. So literally this is a breakthrough technology in terms of the products, but it's a breakthrough technology in terms of what it could offer the environment. Because it's so transportable, because it's so growable in many different locations, it, it really redefines how energy is gotten. Right mm -hmm. now, energy is gotten from very specific locations and controlled. This will inevitably be uh, uncontrollable in terms of its ability to be created, managed, handled by small groups of people. Mm -hmm. And when you sort of free up the constraints on how we grow and create energy, you really free up price. Well, now, what's going on with, let's say, sapphire energy right now in terms of price per gallon, if algae fuel were to be sold today, what would the price be per gallon at a pump? There's no way to price it. There's so little being produced. Uh, what, they're, what they're focusing on right now is not quantity, but mechanism. How can they produce the most algae fuel with the lowest environmental impact for the least amount of money? Getting all those mechanisms right is far more important than going, oh, we're up to a million barrels already. Because if we're up to a million barrels, but we're sacrificing environment, then we're back where we started. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now is a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money is being put into uh, trying to establish an industry that will be able to create liquid fuels without all of the drawbacks of the former oil industry. And therefore, there's not as much fuel happening and much more research and development. Okay. Yeah. Now, where do you see energy going let's let's jump ahead it's 2010 let's jump ahead to 2040 what is your ideal scenario and where do you think this is going